Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Yeah, it's been a little minute, man, and we're going to get into all that with today's video. Before we even start the video, I even tell y'all, y'all already saw the thumbnails. You know what the video is about. Just want to take a second to kick it with y'all, man, and talk with y'all, because a lot of times, some of the best advice I receive is from you guys, the viewers, subscribers. Y'all guys show me a lot of love, and y'all have y'all have never led me in the wrong direction. So I've been battling myself, should I say, lately. Pent up aggression, anger, emotions towards a certain individual, right? Having a lot of bad thoughts about wanting to do something to this person. I know I can't, nor would I ever act on it. I'd never jeopardize my freedom, put myself in a position to be taken away from this world or my kids, my wife, anybody that loves me. But it's like the old me is, as far as this guy goes, it's, I'm, I'm fighting him, I'm fighting them demons, man. And you shouldn't say you hate somebody, but I hate this person. They've done so much bad that I really, 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 legitly, I hate this person. And I wish nothing but the worst for them. And I shouldn't say that, but I'm just being honest. I shouldn't feel that way because it can mess up my karma. It can, you know, you should never have hatred in your heart. You know, it just, it, it poisons you. And I know that, but I can't change how I feel. It's had me in a real dark place as of lately. Mentally, I go to make a video and I can't even really be myself and smile the way I want to because the situation has so much you know, mind control over me like Debo. So I want y'all to pray for me, man. If you don't pray, just keep me in your thoughts. Send me some advice on, on what would you do, man, if there's somebody running around that you just, and I don't even have to see this person, but just knowing that this person exists after everything they've done, all the bad they've done, that they get to breathe this air and live their life like nothing's wrong. It's really eating at me, man. And I guess forgiveness is for me. That I know I have to forgive this person for myself. But I'm struggling is what I'm getting at. And it's affecting me. Then on top of it, I had somebody that was once very dear to me. Somebody that I once cared about. Die. This past weekend This is a girl that I was messing with Prior to prison That Even while I was in prison I tried to run off And she just would not leave She wouldn't give up on me I remember her coming to see me And I just denied the visits she drive hours to come see me I always felt like she could do better than me She shouldn't waste her life on somebody that was locked up on a convict. So I wouldn't even acknowledge her. I wouldn't write her back for the longest time, man. And then I did start talking to her again and we became really good friends. And then you know how it is, man. Life just takes you in different directions. Towards the end of my bed, me and her were together and we couldn't see eye to eye. And I didn't want to dislike her, or have any animosity towards her. So we split went our different directions. I woke up on my wife Sunday morning to tell me that the girl passed away Saturday night. So I talked to some people and dug a little deeper into what took place for the person that was there with her that night. I know. Don't nobody else know, but I know. And you know who you are, and I know you're watching. But they said that they found her in the bathroom. Her back against the wall. She was slumped down in the floor with her legs stretched out in front of her. Her head was back, her eyes were wide open. She was staring at the ceiling, and her lips were purple. Almost a shade of black. Her heart exploded. She died right there in that bathroom by herself. 
with all that being said, that's what I'm dealing with. That's where my mind is mentally, the mental image of her sitting there. This girl had this great big smile. Everybody that knew her loved her. She had a heart of gold, was very close to her family. She is now being buried. She had to have her memorial service coming this weekend. She was very close to her family, like I said, and they are left to put the pieces back together. It's a lot to take care of, a lot to deal with, a lot to deal with mentally. So with all that being said, man, with all the negative that's taking place, I thought back to the first person I ever seen die. I'm not in the streets, but actually, I didn't see a lot of people die throughout the years in the system. I did see people die, but it's not like I saw a person every day. Throughout the course of 10 years and all my time incarcerated, there was a total of one, two, three, four, five different occasions I saw someone lose their life. Today we're going to talk some about some of those situations and we're going to talk about the first guy that I ever saw lose his life, what led up to it, and uh, just all of that twisted into one big ball of chaos. That is today's video. Watch someone lose their life while incarcerated. It's a crazy thing to anybody that's ever dealt with it, was up close and personal and seen it. And actually watch like the life leave from someone's body. It is something that sticks with you forever. It's something that no matter how much time passes, it doesn't haze over. It doesn't get less clear. You still see it all those years later, just as clear as you did the day it happened. The day I'm going to share some of these situations with you. With all that being said, and that long opening, keep me in your prayers, man. And for the dude that I spoke about, I guess keep him in your prayers as well. Anyways, you know how to see it, you know how to live it, so let's relive it. Alright, so with this first story, due to the, the serious nature of it, I'm going to leave the institution up out of it. I'm not going to even mention where I was at. If I do say any names, they've been changed because uh, I don't know what the outcome of it was. I ended up going home from this place after all this ensued and the investigation was taking place. The police from the outside came in. We called them the men in black. Um, feds, all these different people came swooping in because so many people got hurt. And before they could ever get to question, they go cell by cell, pull you and your cellmate out and take y'all down interrogate y'all about what y'all saw, what y'all knew, who you seen do what, and the convicts, you know, we just stay quiet. Before they ever even got to where my cell was, I was released and went home. So I don't know what the outcome of the situation was. I don't know if anybody was ever charged. So I had to be careful of what I say as far as dates, the place, location, names, all that, because I wouldn't want to see nobody ever get in trouble, man. It's just not why I do this. So way back, way back when I'm at this institution and I'm locked up, been there for a while. The gangs weren't the issue at this place. They were not. The issue at this place were the Muslims. These dudes were savages. Now that's not what you think of when you think of Muslims. You think of bean pies and, you know, bow ties and peace and all that. That was not where I was at. These were not the Muslims that, for people that haven't done time with these type of Muslims, these are not the Muslims you're thinking of. These are dudes that, majority of these dudes had bodies, gun charges, dope cases. They were dope boys in the streets, killers. Now, even in the streets, they made Salat, you know, they worshiped Allah, they did their thing. You put them in the prison system, the difference between the streets and the prison system is there's a lot more of them. The strength in numbers. There are so many of these guys, man. And if you messed with one of them, you mess with all of them. And these boys would chop you up, poke holes in you, mow you down. I had seen it time and time again. Anytime you heard somebody got to beefing, one of the first things you'd ask is, well, who they beefing with? And if you would hear a name and you knew it was one of them dudes or somebody that was with them, you'd be like, oh, this is bad. There's no winning that. The most you can hope is that you get your thing off on them and that the guards come running up before these dudes kill you. 
So every year the Muslims have what's called Ramadan. Ramadan is a religious holiday. They fast. They do not eat from the time the sun comes up till the sun goes down. Every morning they would get up and they would go to the chow hall before everybody else would still be dark outside and they would eat their meal. Then after it got dark that evening, they would all go over there and they were fed a certain meal. And then at the very end, they had a big feast. At least this is how it was where I was at. If it's not how it was where you were, we just didn't do time in the same places. The first day them guys go over there, the stuff they're supposed to be served, they're supposed to be served a certain diet, certain foods. The stuff wasn't there. They tried to give these Muslim dudes the same food they were giving everybody else. These guys have not eaten, and now they go over there, and you're trying to feed them beans and hot dogs. They weren't going for it. Guys refused the trays, had a big uproar in the chow hall, started tearing shit up, throwing shit. Goon squad comes in, guards come in, they lock a bunch of the guys up, take them to the hole. And like, I guess, I don't know if you call them the elders or what you call them, but the dudes that were, you know, more mature, older dudes stepped in and said, hey, y'all ain't gonna carry us like this, man. Y'all gonna get our food here. And when we come here tomorrow to eat, the food better be right or we'll tear this, tear this place up, man. The guards agree. Look, the food didn't come in on the food truck. It's not us, it's not the prison. It was a mix up in the order of what we ordered. The food didn't come in. What would you like us to do? They told him, we don't care what y'all do. If this happens again, it's going to be an all-out war inside the prison, and this ain't something y'all want to do. Y'all better fix it. We're all back in the cell block when we get wind of what's happening in the, in the chow hall. The dudes start coming back from chow at night. They're amped up. Several fights pop off because other dudes, man, y'all act like it's that big of a deal. Like, y'all should be eating different food than us. Thank y'all for super privileged and... The Muslim boys, doo -doo -doo, get to digging up in their mouths. Certain dudes got stabbed. A lot transpired just in that first night of everything taking place, right? When the word came out quick, it got around real fast, and we all started hearing it, especially it was like they made it announced. And several of these dudes had said it out loud. Come tomorrow, they felt like it was like almost like a jab at the Muslims. If this ain't right, Anybody that ain't Muslims getting it straight up. We're going to start, you know, laying people down and hit slaying people. We start chopping y'all down so they know we ain't to be played with. They go over there that morning and they gave them cereal. They eat like this dry cereal with milk and all that. So that was straight. Come that evening, we're all anticipating it. I'm not Muslim. Dudes I rock with ain't. I know a lot of the Muslims. I'm cool with them. But I rock with dudes that aren't Muslim also. So that puts us against each other. Now dudes that I'm cool with, it's a very good chance I'm going to have to go head up against for something that ain't got nothing to do with me, all because the prison messed up their diet. That evening before they go to chow, them dudes tell them, they pretty much tell everybody, when we get, if we come, we go to chow and that food's messed up, and they try to disrespect us again, everybody in this bitch better be ready because we come back. We can grab them swords and we can start killing shit in here straight up. Everybody wants to play us, drag us. They don't mess with the Christians like that. They don't be messing with the white boys or nobody or the Puerto Ricans. Or, they're just like mad at everybody else. We ain't got nothing to do with it. And they're singling people out like we had something to do with it. Let that food not be right. When we return back to this pod, swear to God we're going to strap up. We're going to kill everything that ain't Muslim. They stayed true to their word, right? Everything initially pops off in the chow hall with them fighting with the chow hall workers. Chow hall workers aren't Muslims. They don't have anything to do with what they're serving them. So they start by going at the chow hall workers, attacking them, fighting with them, right? The guards intervene, some guards get hurt, and they pop the gates and tell them, get them all back to the building, get them back to the building, right? What they should have done is isolated everybody in that chow hall and started locking people up. They should not have sent guys back, but by the time the guards reacted to what was going on and other guards were fighting and the inmates were fighting the, the servers that were working in the kitchen a bunch of the guys that knew they had a mission to do which was go back and try to kill everything that wasn't Muslim had fallen back put their hands up hey we ain't got nothing to do with it peace you know they send all these dudes back to the building as they're coming down the hallway and this is a lot of guys you're talking up with some 40 or 50 guys branching off to different pods 
they've got the door, the main door to our unit open, and all these Muslim dudes are piling in. They've already told us to lock down. It's now after count time. These guys are coming back. This incident's happened. We should have all been locked in. I've already gone in my cell. My cell is located by the stairwell towards the back, right? Like right by the stairwell. When these dudes come in, their doors open, they're telling them to lock down. These dudes run to their cells, get whatever weapons they had pre-made, knives, pokers, razors, you know, the locks and socks, soap and socks, different weapons, and they come out and they just start attacking dudes. Dudes are out there sweeping up. Boom! Hitting them upside the head. The guard pushes the button, shuts all the cell doors. My cell door is already closed. These doors were on the old chain system where they go clang, 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 and they shut. They push one button, all the doors shut at once. Kind of like vibrates until it closes, right? Boom. Then once it closes, you can't open it. So I'm standing at the door and I'm watching. There's probably upwards of probably 25 Muslims out there in the pod strapped up with weapons, chasing dudes around, trying to stab them, firing them up with the locks, boom, popping them on top of their heads, stabbing dudes, cutting them. Got several dudes on one dude over here jumping them. A bunch of dudes ran to the back, right in front of my cell where it's like the very back of the pod and they're trying to get away from the stuff going on. They ain't got nothing to do with it. These dudes are like cleaning up out there, cleaning up the area, wiping off the tables. That is their job every single day. And I see a bunch of the Muslim boys coming rushing towards the back where these dudes are standing out in front of my cell, maybe five, six feet. And they're way off in the corner trying to stay away from it in hopes that if it does spill over here, they can run in a different direction and get away from it. Well, these dudes see these dudes and they all, group of them, runs back there and all these dudes go to running. And I see this one young dude, this dude must have been like a damn baby, maybe 19, 20 years old. He's kind of courting, he goes to run, and when he goes to run around the one Muslim dude, another dude steps out and swings a banger and hits him in the side of his throat. A banger is just a sharpened piece of steel. This looked something about maybe eight inches long, round like a pencil, but it was a piece of metal. And he hit the boy one time in the throat, right? The dude took off running, took maybe seven, eight steps, and was like, still, I don't think he even knew he had been stuck. He's, you can see he's panicking. Dude start punching him. Now the dude that stuck him in the neck has moved off and is chasing the other dudes that was with him throughout the pod. He's stabbed several people now. And these dudes start jumping this boy. And at first he's like, got his arms up and you can see he's trying to defend himself but he's been stuck in the side of his neck and he goes from having his arms up and trying to defend himself to you can just see he just kind of collapses and falls over dudes continue to kick this dude kick him in his face stomp on his head punching him holding him by his shirt hitting him and dudes are responsive at first this stuff was like really really coming out of his neck like like something out of a movie it was movies do no justice to what the stuff looks like those are special effects in real life sometimes they amp it up in movies but when you're seeing something like this and like in in real life and you see it it's way different it's no all oh, shock value because tv it's life they finished tagging the dude and they roll out and i noticed now that this is how this is when i knew the boy was dead as he was standing up trying to defend himself, the stuff was coming out of his neck real fast. After they jumped in, he was laying on the ground. It was like instantly, it went from coming out of his neck real fast to it just being a slow trickle to the bleeding just stopped. This dude's laying in front of my cell. At this point from him running from them, he might be about 10, 12 feet from where I'm at now. And I'm looking out my door and I'm looking at this dude as he's laying there. And one of his eyes is completely closed. And his other eye is barely open enough that you can see the white of his eyeball. And he's just laying on his side, bled out. Dead. Goon squad come rushes in, rushing in, and these dudes start fighting. And it's the first time I'd seen this also. They had this big ass canister. It looked almost like fire extinguisher that you would take and put out a fire with, but it had a big cone on the end of it, and this thing administered mace, like pepper spray. And they were just hitting everybody with it. And he'd hit it and this big yellow cloud would come out and he would mess everybody up. It messed all of us up in the cell. And then they, you know, do what they do. The guards are not playing. They're smacking dudes in the head, flashlights, walkie-talkies, the billy clubs. It's full-fledged, do whatever we got to do to get this under control. They get all the Muslim dudes rounded up. A bunch of them act like they didn't have nothing to do with it. I watched it all. I know who did and who didn't. 
I know who stabbed the boy in the neck. I watched it take place. I know who assaulted him after he was laying there poked up. I watched it all take place. The crazy thing is one of the dudes that was kicking his boy in the face and hitting him was a dude that I used to laugh and joke with. Kick it, smoke with, eat with all the time. I thought dude was all right, dude. But after I watched him do that to this defenseless man, it completely it changed my view on that dude, right? They come in and they start cleaning up the mess. Now when there's a body, they don't move the body. They bring the doctors, the nurses in, they check for a pulse. The man ain't got no pulse. I'm still standing at my door looking out and the guards never look up at me and I kind of move away from the door because I don't want them to question me about nothing. But then you got everybody standing at that door now looking at everybody that's getting, they had so many people, they're not even handcuffed people, they're zip tying them behind their back and leading them out, right? Dudes are covered in other people's blood, their own blood. And don't think these dudes wasn't fighting back. Some of these dudes, these Muslim dudes attack, have wanted this rap. They was ready for it. So they had their bangers on them too. Some of these Muslim boys got messed up, right? They start zip tying people, taking them out of there. Now they're doing damage control. Looking at how bad the pod's been torn up. There's blood here, blood there. Blood trails throughout the pod, blood leading in the cells. They're finding other people now. They got the cell doors open and started letting people in. Because I told you they shut the cell doors. They're finding trails of blood leading in the cells. Going to check in. Oh, we got one that's in the cell now that's stabbed. Man, I don't, don't want to get in no trouble, but the man stabbed. Meanwhile, this dude is still laying out in front of my cell. Doctors, nurses, they do everything they can, you know, to try to work on him until they realize there's a hole in the side of his neck that went through a vein. He is dead. His heart is bled out. He's done. His brain's dead, right? They come in. They zip that boy up, put him in the bag, and they toted him up out of there. I remember watching him pick him up, and from the time that he died until the point that they finished their investigation and got him in a bag. It was about six, seven hours. It was a very long time he laid there on that floor to the point that the, red, the blood that was all around him went from the color of blood to being almost uh, like a, a brown color, like a brown. That's the only way to explain it. They zipped the boy up and took him up out of there. They start their investigation. First thing they do is they start questioning all the guys that were stabbed and cut as far as to what they seen why it took place, anybody they took into custody that had blood on them, whose blood is this, what happened. They're gonna deal with all them guys first because they clearly know what happened, right? Who stabbed you? I don't know. Why'd you get stabbed? I don't know. They had already got wind that this was gonna pop off had they not fixed these guys' meals for Ramadan, right? And they didn't do anything about it. And it's not a shot at the Muslims because I don't judge anybody based off of what some people do. I've met good Christians, bad Christians, good Muslims, bad Muslims, mean Muslims, peaceful Muslims. Like, I don't judge nobody off the actions of some people. But they go through and they start questioning everybody. They start at cell one and they take them out and they take the two guys, bring them out, put them in handcuffs, take them to the investigator's office, bring them back. And it just so happened when all this transpired, I was with like within days of being released. I'll never forget that morning they called my name, popped my door, Williams, bag and bag, you out of here. And I walked out in the pod and I looked around and there were so many different people. All right, Jay. That door yelling, all right, be safe. Don't forget to call such and such. Dudes always want you to do something for them. Hey, don't forget about me, man. Holler at my people when you get out. All right, bro, be good. And I just remember like looking around at the room and looking back over where my cell was. I'm thinking about seeing that boy later. Boy didn't do nothing to nobody. He was scared to begin with. He tried to run from it. The dude that I initially thought was just gonna hit him wasn't even the one that got him. One of the dudes behind him stepped around him and just one quick jab hit him in his throat one time. I don't even know if he realized he killed the boy. Stuck him one time and kept him moving, took off, chasing somebody else. But just like that, they released me. I remember Going to the front, getting my property, changing back into my street clothes. Had a little brown bag with my stuff in it. And I stepped out front of this place, right? I'm watching the cars go down the street. I'm headed across the street, jump on the bus, right? To head home. I remember standing at the bus stop, just looking over there thinking, these people out here don't even know what's going on, man. They live their nice, peaceful, quiet lives. None of this hit the news. And they have no clue what's going on right inside there right now. They have no clue that as they're driving to work, drinking their morning coffee, that there's men in there dying. Men in there killing other men. 
could be one of your family members that got locked up with something real stupid. And just like that, could have got hit in his neck, laid there and died. That has always stuck with me. Like I told y'all in the beginning, there are certain things you're going to see in life that no matter what you go through, where you go, what you experience, you'll never shake that image. I didn't want to see that. I didn't ask to see that. Seeing that doesn't make me tough. It's just part of my history. It's just something I had to witness. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm glad I was in that cell. Straight up. Why act tough? Why would I act like I wanted to be out there in the midst of all that? Running around sticking, stabbing, cutting, getting cut, trying to hurt somebody. No, I was glad that I was in my cell. I was glad that I was on the inside looking out. I wasn't glad to see people fighting for their lives and all the violence taking place. It was literally like watching something out of a movie. There's so much going on. You got guys just running. You, you ain't never seen a man really run until you've seen two or three dudes jump on him and trying to hurt him with knives, you know, razors, pokers, things like that. Or a guy that ain't been stuck trying to maneuver and run away from somebody that's got a weapon and he's trying to swat at him as this dude's trying to stick him. Or you got somebody that's already been stabbed three or four times, screaming for help, laying on the ground. You look around and there's just people getting punched, cut, stabbed, poked. And here you are behind the safety of the door, just watching it. Some of them guys I'm watching run around fighting for their lives, I know. I'm all right with it. Some of the guys that are chasing them, doing these things to them, I know. I'm all right with it. That was what I signed up for. Had I stayed out of trouble, done what everybody told me, not wanted to be this dumb criminal, I would have never had to witness that. But sadly enough, I did. The man lost his life. Laid right there on the penitentiary floor and died. You know, it's crazy looking back on events like that, those moments, that being my life, and where I am today in life. You know, after telling that story, thinking back to how I opened this video, I have a lot to be grateful for, man. A lot of y'all have got a lot to be grateful for. I've come so far, but I've got so far to go. I went through all that to get to where I'm at today. I had to go through that to become who I've become. I do want to leave y'all with this real quick. I feel it's very important. For anybody struggling with addiction, I understand it's a struggle. Please stop. Please. Think about the people that you could potentially leave behind. That girl did not do that with the intent on dying. If you would have told her Friday night, tomorrow night, you'll be dead if you do drugs. She wouldn't have believed it. Even with you watching this, if I tell you, tomorrow night you could be dead if you do drugs, people are still going to get high. Take back your life. Take back the power that the drugs are taking away from you. Reach out to someone, get help. People care about you. You may not think so, and you won't even realize it until you're dead and gone and everybody else is left to put the pieces together. You are loved and you will be missed. She was loved and she will be missed. We're the ones that are left behind to deal with it. You don't feel anything, you don't feel any pain. And if you do, it's only temporary. Can you imagine what was going through her head as she was sitting there and her heart was exploding, beating fast, her breathing all messed up, then everything just faded to black? Don't become a statistic, man. Please listen to what I say, please. Somebody cares about you. And if you don't think that anybody cares about you, let me tell you this, even if I don't know you, I care about you because I'm human. 
I don't want to turn on the news and see that somebody had something bad happen to them when they passed. You know, this is so normal that it doesn't even make the news anymore. She didn't make the news. These things don't make the news. There's a reason I didn't even mention her name because I don't want that to be how she's remembered. And me saying her name, somebody be like, oh, damn, that you talking about her? No, I don't want her to be remembered like that. But that is the sad reality. My heart goes out to her and her family. God bless you. May you rest in peace. You didn't deserve to go out like that. The war that you have fought for many years is finally over. And it's sad to say you did not win. Nobody wins when these type of things happen. I'm going to leave y'all with that. Man. But anyways, these jails, detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazier world inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, not all some real ones watching, because y'all still watch me. Y'all know how we do it. Salute. Rest in peace.